stage earlier today and we know a lot of people your first world sometimes you get a little the jitters you get the shakes you get a little bit nervous but to have someone hold your shoulder and say it's gonna be okay I got you yeah. it really helps especially at the top level competition that we are about to see today draft is up for both of these teams and Zora Tigers gaming and Zeta division what is on the table when it comes to bands so far looking at some pretty popular choices here with the Hooper Charizard and Cerule ledge but what's this final band going to be for Zeta Division? Yeah, I'm very curious. Going with the Sarah Ledge band, which is Leafeon. not as super popular in our tournament, but it will be that Leafeon. So Zeta Division, wary of how powerful this speedster Pokemon is. It's truly the only speedster that's really found a lot of success here on the main stage. A little bit of Dodrio in some niche cases. And in fact, this might be the game where we see the Dodrio come out from oh. Kukata, but we'll have to see the first selections from Zord Tigers Gaming, clearly the Umbreon, but Zeta Division is gonna pick that Urshifu Blissey combination. Yeah, Blissey has been such an integral Pokemon for Zeta Division. They really love to use that Bliss assistance aggressively, not just to save their teammates, but really capitalize on that massive damage boost for whoever gets that Bliss assist. Now, this Urshifu Vitoppo, we know he is incredibly aggressive as a player, so he's gonna be wanting to make those moves early. And I was wondering, is Zora Tigers, do they wanna match that energy? Energy. And if you're picking Blaziken and Inteleon, you're going to be a little slower out the gate. But the good news is that they have actually prevented Rom yes. from getting his hands on that Inteleon. Exactly. Yeah, if you could prevent Rom from having that Playmaker Sniper Pokemon in Inteleon, I think you're very happy about your draft phase so far. However, I think that confidence is going to start to waver a bit with these next two picks of Zeta Division. The Espeon, a Pokemon that is having uh, way more success than people, I think, I expected from it. We see uh, the percentage stats on this player right now. Rom is a 100% win rate in tournament right now on this Espeon. All right. Actually, I want to point out Rom and Sabine. They have they've got very similar pools of po Pokemon that they play. They yeah. both play Espeon. They both play Inteleon, which I think is a very interesting observation. But what are we going to see rounded out here for Zeta Division? They have been favoring that Blastoise, and it's going to be on Kokoda again. So a fan favorite of his. I'm looking at the two draft zoinks, okay? Who are you kind of favoring here, just going into the laning stage? I think I really like Zeta Division's composition. We're going double defender into an Inteleon. We might not have that dive potential outside of maybe some early game moments of Vidopo, but other than that, I think we're feeling very solid. If we're looking at just some of the statistics, I think you're feeling fantastic about Zeta Division's composition. I mean, Kakata has picked this Blastoise 71% of their games in this tournament, and they're walking away with an 80% win rate on it as well. We see the items being locked of that Muscle Band, Rapid Fire Scarf, and Focus Band. We're going for a lot of auto attacks. We're looking at a Spin Stoys. Looking at a Spin Stoys and being such a big team as well. Look at how big and tanky Zeta Division are overall. This is going to put a lot of pressure on Zoro Tigers to now have to focus their damage in those fights. They have to focus someone down because if you spread that damage, sure, they have some pretty good damage across the board, but you have to focus Pokemon down, otherwise they will survive and they will turn. And we know Zeta Division, they want to turn the tables and continue those fights for as long as possible, especially with how tanky their overall lineups are. But it looks like the game is ready, so let's hop to it, folks. It's game number one between Zeta Division and Zora Tigers Gaming Japan region versus the Korean region. Yeah, this is for top four, a spot there. And of course, the loser will be headed home. We have Tomato covering for their Urshifu player, taking some of these early buffs away. But they're actually going to be splitting it up. Kokata on that Squirtle going to take the blue, or the red buff rather, move into the top path. Squirtle with a red buff applies slowing effects with their boosted auto attacks, water gun, and of course the red buff itself. A lot, a lot of slowing going into that magic card. I actually love this uh, buff mirror matchup happening in the top lane, right? We've huh. got a support going up against the defender, but having access to this buff, you can definitely tell they want to try and get that KO on each other. If possible, but the central laners have headed towards that bottom lane, and it looks like our first KO is going to be on that Sobble. So for Zeta Division, a great start in this bottom lane, because you've gotten rid of the attacker, and you also got rid of the Combuskin, so two and one, looking for that third if they can. Tomato is going to be okay, actually going to be setting up and ward. Might go down, they just can't get Tomato. 
Oh, wow, I mean, almost getting Ward as well. Bidopo looking to try to take out that Eevee before they get to that Eevee Illusion. I believe Focus Band still available, makes that KO a whole lot tougher. But great setup. I mean, Tomato has understood these defenders so, so well. We talked about how they've been a dominant force on Trevin for so long. Lapras in some games, it's been a minute since then. But even this Swinub, Piloswine, Mamoswine, whatever stage they're at, they know the ins and outs and how to dominate the laning phase. All right, so Jong, he is that Gyarados, but he's not looking too happy here with three Pokemon on his tail and actually sent straight back to that Pokemon Center. If there's one thing Zora Tigers love to do, they love to power Jong up. Earlier this year during the Asia Champions League, one of the major strategies that Zora Tigers love to do is to give Jong that really early game start. Back then, he was playing that boss ball, so if you let him just go completely ham in the top lane, he can take over, but as this Gyarados, there's only so much he can do with the rest of his team really in just an awkward position, and with how aggressively Zeta Division are playing this, it doesn't seem like they're finding any openings to capitalize on any mistakes. Yeah, it's been tough. I mean, Zeta Division putting up a fantastic defense, and yeah, I don't think they're very well known for their mistakes at this point. So I'm gonna take some early damage, and if any, if there's a bright spot for Zor Tigers Gaming is that they're keeping a pace with Kokata on the other side of that top path. It can Whoa. get really out of hand if that Gyarados starts getting out leveled, but they got a 1v3 to take care of. On the bottom side of the map, though, things are looking quite good. Subin setting up some of these snipe shots, is out leveling Rom, but Espeon doesn't really need that level scaling as much as other attackers. They have rotated into that top lane because the Gyarados unfortunately was taken out. Just so much offense happening in that top lane for Zeta Division because they want to they want to completely control it. Break the goal zone, go straight for these objectives. If they can deny Zora Tigers all of the objectives, they're gonna starve them out, they're gonna fall behind in those levels, and then that's where you're gonna have to be questioning if you're Zora Tigers. What's your plan B? Because the overall composition for this team is really team fight. Yeah, 100%. And I mean, taking out Zora Tigers gave me that early fight makes things a little mixy. However, Registeel is taken out by the Blaze Skin. So they get at least one of these objectives. Reggie likely right in front of this tier number two. The Blaze Skin taking out the Pilots one at the bottom. Pathless Kokata getting involved into taking out the Umbreon. That is a huge KO for Vidopo. Finding that Gyarados for a second time. And this is a ton of points into this tier two. Well, most likely be seeing a gold zone break rather soon, but we need those attack weight stacks on the urgent move first. Love that Ward just swiped away the points just in case the copper was thinking. It's a great call, honestly. I you like have that. To. Yeah. yeah, you have to deny those points, but Zora Tigers, they really want to try and find something, but just the fact that Zeta Division, they are grouping up and staying together. You are not going to find this team separated. The only one alone is Tomato, but you know, Tomato, he's just a diversion. He's just doing his own thing. Yeah, he goes down, but it's just a pile of sign. Exactly. I mean, giving up very little comeback experience in a moment like that. Vidopo is caught in a mean look at the moment. However, they're able to outlast it thanks to that Blissey healing and join up for the next fight. First Rapid Strike is used. Blaze can try to tee up for a moment, but nobody within range, as well as Jong's Gyarados oh, fight move, finds nothing, and Rom is able to take that knockout. Kokata does take a pretty big snipe shot, but Wajiro in that latent hitbox will take a bit of damage, but positioned there to block the damage from the Blastoise. Great maneuvering from the support player. So disciplined on the side of Zeta. They could have tried to break that into a fight, but they just decided, guys, we're gonna play it safe. Can't give them any opportunities. We cannot make those mistakes. So just to go for the reset, grab those wi the wild Pokemon again, reset your buffs, get ready for this next objective, because it's going to be that top Reggie Alecki. Now these snipe shots, this can start to add up for Zora Tigers if Sabine can continue to land them because that big chunk of damage, if you drop someone low enough, that is absolutely an opportunity for somebody to get jumped. Exactly, that's gonna be Jong and of course the Blaziken out of Mule's job. You wanna jump on those low HP targets and take full advantage of the early poke that Subin's able to put together. But so far, uh -oh. not really finding much. That will be Blaziken pulling back two targets. Eldegoss Unite move used extremely preemptively, trying to get a bit of healing. Tomato does have their own Unite move. Espeon picks up three in the air, and it's Rom getting to work. Vidopo in the backline, they have found Subin in that tall grass, but they're gonna have to chase oh. them down all the way. Jung learns what's going on in this fight, it's just gonna recall back to base as well as Ward and Zeta Division will win yet another team fight.
Of all the people to initiate that fight, it was Rom on the Espeon, jumps forward, Psychic, Solaire locks everyone in place, just opening them up for those knockouts. Now, hang on a minute, has Zeta Division gone a little bit too far here? Maybe not, they're still getting knockouts here. The freeze onto the mid attack animation there for Jong. They will get Tomato, but again, remember, this is just a defender. He's just level 10. He's not giving those levels away. Rom, in the meantime, he's a level 12 Espeon, so you kind of don't want to be losing your attacker here. Maybe Maybe Zeta Division have stuck around for a bit too long in that central area. Maybe. I mean, they got an extra KO onto the Blaze King as well in that scenario. So I think that trade, honestly, worth it at that point, in my opinion. But the big source of experience for Zora Tigers Gaming will be found in that Registeel. Team-wide shield, not to mention the attack buff that they are going to have. It does last 90 seconds. So it'll last for the first few moments of the Rayquaza fight as soon as it spawns in. They'll have to try to contend with that extra damage and see if they can make any kind of movements happen. But so far, Zeta Division has been unrelenting. I cannot stress as well the fact that you have this buff. This is possibly going to discourage Zeta Division from wanting to fight because if you fight into that damage buff, look how much damage Tomato are taking just from those snipes. They're going to keep going. The gold zone is broken. They have managed to catch out that blast wave. But Topo, they're really thinking, does he want to go in there? They do get the pullback, but it's just an Umbreon. And Tomato drops down again. Still 45 seconds on that attack buff. Zeta Division, they need to calm down. Yeah, they well, need to calm down. Now they got two knockouts out of it, so that's a decent amount of experience. The problem is the goal zone defense is going to be incredible from Zeta Division. You're investing in this double defender composition for a reason, and it applies a lot of crowd control, but it's also so difficult to get those KOs in a very quick amount of time when you're trying to score on these goal zones. But that push will result in Zora Tigers Gaming having the superior positioning for this Rayquaza fight, and they're going to push in a little bit early. Interesting decision because they don't have Sabine. Sabine is actually back in their central area trying to finish up getting that experience and those points. Now with 50 points, five seconds left on this attack buff before it expires. And Zeta Division, I'm pretty sure they're keeping tabs on this. Once that's down, it's an opportunity for them to jump. All right, Tomato was trapped in the mean loop and took a snipe shot, but the Unite move brings them back to about half HP. We have the Dragon Current chasing down the target, but Hindrance Resistance Spin Stoys will not be knocked midair. Jong does chase down a couple of targets. Jong's in the back line, but they're locked up by this Mammoth Swine and Espeon. Make that even longer. Psychic Solaire trapping them for forever, but Jong is able to dive away. And it's the, the Elyon to start off. Subin finding the KO onto the Blast Toys. Oh, this Umbreon not looking too healthy. Forced to use the Unite as well. Rayquaza down to half health as well. We need to get that secure. So he's charging Espeon! Rom on this Espeon! Secures the Rayquaza and three teammates on Zora Tigers instantly knocked out in that battle. Zeta Division. I don't know how they do it. They are so good at securing these objectives. They made the perfect play calls in those final moments. Blaziken, realistically, the only secure threat that they really had to deal with. And as soon as you see Rayquaza gone, you take a look on the left side of your screen at the 14 second respawn timer. So they isolate that Pokemon first, even mid overheat, and find that KO. With 42 seconds left and a score line of 700. This is Zeta Division starting off our series 1-0. Starting off 1-0, looking fantastic and basically setting themselves up one more game. That's all it takes for Zeta Division to continue on in the tournament. Get one more game in. If they mess up the next one, they still have another game to go. But for Zora Tigers, you've got to now start thinking about game number two. What needs to be banned? What needs to be changed? What has to be fixed? And it, again, like we've mentioned this earlier today, Zeta Division is not a one-dimensional team. It's not a case of banning one Pokemon, banning for a particular strat. You need to do multiple things to slowly and methodically shut them down. You know what's interesting about that too is I feel like that is a thing that we could credit this team with earlier on in the season. I feel like we could kind of look at their play style, you see objectively how they focus, around these big moments in the game, and that is a very another, and it's Espeon taking the ray in all of that. Do you know how lucky you have to be as well to get stored power shots to land on Rayquaza? I know. <laughs> Normally, it's going to be landing on other Pokemon, so... Exactly. <laughs> it's just Rom. I don't know how this man does it. He's just Rom. Plays amazingly on the Inteleon and the Espeon. I don't expect the Espeon ban, but I want to know what's the thought process here for Zora Tigers now, because ban-wise, 
Hooper, Charizard, whereas the Zeta Division and Cerule Legend Leaf Yon taken out of that pool. Okay. What changes Ooh. are we going to see? And it looks like oh, Urshifu was one of them. Love this decision. Vidopo has become a phenomenal talent on this Urshifu. And when they pair it with this Blissey that they frequently pick in their drafts, it just becomes another level. So Wajiro will go with that Blissey for a second time, taking that Blissey Umbreon pick. Again, I've said it a few times on broadcast, my favorite orange side first pick pair, but they were going to be denying that Urshifu Blissey combination for two games in a row. And it looks like the next pick is going to be that Gyarados. So again, I think Jong did reasonably well on that Gyarados. Mm -hmm. Maybe have to just polish up that top lane a little bit more because he didn't have the easiest time. But then again, it was also Vitopo Urshifu applying a little bit of pressure up there. So if they can tighten up Jong's early game, I feel like Jong could be such a big factor for the team. Now, one thing I am sort of curious about here was the fact that we locked in the support and the defender on Zeta Division. They could have gone for Roms and Teleon, but are they basically using it as a bait, saying, okay, we Rom can play in Teleon, but maybe we kind of don't want in Teleon now. Yeah, we can have it. I think they're extremely confident in this more bulky fr uh, frontline based composition rather than the snipers that they've been leading into. And Whoa. we're going to see Vidopos Dragonite oh, locked boy. in as that final pick. Ward will be on the Trevenant in this matchup, which I think is going to be one of the best looks for Zora Tigers gaming that we have seen so far. But as you can see, some players swapping around. We get a better look at what Zeta Division is trying to do. That is a tank Mamoswine and a Top Path Brawling Umbreon. Top Path Umbreon ah. is pretty unreal strong. You see it running the attack weight, so obviously it will boost its attack stat, which means either build is really, really good. You're always going to go foul play with this. However, Wish or Snarl, both will have their purpose. Umbreon is this unique mechanic where their healing is actually based off of their attack stat. So if you scale it more with attack weight, you'll be getting better Wish healing. And you can just use that on yourself if you want to as a top path Pokemon. And just have that extra HP to work with. The damage reduction is, as well on that Wish, I feel, is so underrated. Being yep. able to mitigate a lot of that incoming damage. And it's, it helps everybody when it comes to that survivability. So we'll have to see what the plan is going to be. But oh, the Urshifu change, I like. Yeah. The Trevenant pickup, I like. But I don't know if these two Pokemon are enough to really slow down Zeta's very quick early game progression. They are so good in the laning stages. We haven't really seen anybody really be shut down. And Rom, because he's playing Espeon, he doesn't really have that moment of weakness because oh, yeah. he's always going to be hitting that Espeon. And they're usually splitting their buffs too, right? But yeah. all right, we'll get answers to all these questions as we jump into game number two between Sora Tigers Gaming and Zeta Division. All righty. So having a look at these lanes, nothing out of the ordinary it looks like. Just pretty standard across the board. Again, lane priority. Yeah. I want to know what the lane priority is here for Zora Tigers. And are they going to be playing reactionary or are they the ones that are going to try and make these moves happen first? Well, they certainly weren't in the previous game. So you got to no. hope for Zora Tigers game and they'll have a momentum response as well. I was curious if Tomato was going to take the swing up into the enemy central area to start things off, but they are just going to remain in lane as long as they can to try to get that SP on evolution. Jong at about halfway through their effort gauge on this Magikarp and and almost a level four, Gokata is dealing a heck of a lot of damage back the other way as that Umbreon Blissey duo in the top path. Extremely bulky already. Yeah, this bottom lane is a nightmare for Zora Tigers, unfortunately. You might have a Sobble that is really good at secure, but there is so much catch potential in that bottom lane. Although, if this Urshifu comes in, maybe Mule can turn things around, but a couple of hits with that stored power. Yeah, Mule doesn't look too happy down there, but he's gonna do his best. Jong, though, still hanging on as that Magikarp should be able to evolve. Thankfully, has not been knocked out as of yet. Just needs a little bit more time. But with three Pokemon in that top lane, we'll have to play a little further back, maybe even go back into that central area just to get that final bit of experience. But, but the that, topper. That, yeah, that's the fun thing about playing Zeta Division. If you go back to your central area, it's actually not safe anymore because Zeta Division will always be close at your heels. That's a Gossiflor being knocked out. Beat Opal already at level Ooh. six on this Dragon Air and will take out the support player of Zora Tigers Gaming. A good early push by Zeta Division. Uh, this team's motto seems to be early and often with this strategy. 
Yeah, it's, I think it's still early and off to the doing a great job denying experience, really. I think all three lanes have been slowed down on the side of Zora Tigers down bottom. They're still looking at a Drizzile. Jong is just above on that Gyarados, so this is not an early evolution at all. And even though they've had Mule running around on this Urshifu, he, it's, he hasn't had that same level of success that we've had Zeta Division have with the Urshifu picks. And I kind of wonder, is it just the choice of Pokemon that they've decided to go for? They haven't got anyone that can really easily assist for a potential knockout. Yeah, at least not until they have Snipe Shot, right? That is going to be both your closer and your initiator Jeez. if used optimally. But Mule still, even with a Swinub and an Espeon in front of them, they're not able to chase that KO. Instead of playing a little more reserved, fighting around the birds, Zora Tiger's game is going to take most of that experience, but Tomato will take a little bit, giving them their evolution into Pile Swine. This is an interesting move for Pokemon in that bottom lane up against just two so far, just the Pilot Swine and the Espeon. And the fact that they're not getting knocked out, this is a big win because up top it's free experience for Zeta Division. The down bottom though, this Reggie Steel who gets a secure Rob! Again, this Espeon just swiping away these objectives. Yeah, Ward not able to get Rom in that wood hammer. They were trying to pull them out of the tall grass by doing so. Only grabbed one target and unfortunately the wrong one. So Zeta Division undisturbed in their secure attempts and they're going to pick up yet another objective in this game. How many times can I say that? Both objectives. Yep. They've secured both objectives. They didn't even need Vitopo there. Vitopo soloed the Reggie Alecki all by himself. And so Zora Tiger's now back to square one, trying to figure out, how am I going to get those levels on my teammates? How are we going to get some knockouts? How are we going to score? Because they've only scored 33 points. They have struggled to even reach the goal zone. I was going to say, how are we going to get a single knockout in this game? I'm not even confident that Zora Tiger's Gaming has been able to put that together at this point. But when you're playing up against a team like Zeta Division, you have to just play to every one of your outs. It's never going to be an easy task. And currently, the Gyarados looking for a target, with Kokoda taken care of well by Wajiro. That Blissey Umbreon duo, I, I can't really think of a more tanky duo in Unite right now. What a powerful... Uh, duo that is playing around this top side. Yeah, I just don't see them getting knocked out at all. They're just, you also have the Bliss assistance that can potentially come in. So you think you have the, the Umbreon and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay, there's a shielding, extra damage. Um, yeah, I think we're going to have to bail. Oh, Zora Tigers playing so defensively, so reactively. Does it Reactively just... Reactively reserved as well is another word yeah. I would use for it right now. Zora Tigers Gaming play an extremely safe game. Now, the benefit of that is it has been rather challenging to score on these tier twos, something that Zeta Division likes to do a lot of the time. So, Zora Tigers Gaming may have had a rough early game, taken a lot of points into their goal zones. However, if you can shore up your defenses, you can enable a moment in the late game team fight where a comeback can definitely happen happen. So now the time to batten down the hatches, but eventually you need to turn on the offense. Go turn on the offense. Onto the red eyes here. So unfortunately no defense or attack buffs. This would have been so crucial for the Zoro Tigers to maybe feel a little bit more confident trying to fire into um, Zeta Division. They're all going to launch themselves <laughs> into that top lane though, ready to defend against that Reggie Alecki. They can't quite catch anything with the Woodhammer unfortunately, and even a preemptive Unite being used by Sabine. So really just to zone Zeta Division away. They don't get any KOs. They don't latch on to anybody. It was just to stop the Eleki. Yeah, and Zeta Division never done with a simple Unite move bait either. They rotate through the enemy central area, and that's a blue buff taken away onto their side now. Mule also not safe as is going to get a ton of Snarl damage into that Pokemon and stun them for a moment, and this pressure from Zeta Division cannot be understated. At this point of the map, the two-thirds of the map are within their control at any any given time, thanks to this Umbreon and the Mamoswine constantly roaming up and down the center of this area. Looks like they have found Tomato, but unfortunately the Horn Leech just not going to connect. They have found the Umbreon instead, though. Blissey is there, has used the eggs with the sisters as well, and they're forced to use the Dragon Current on the Gyarados, catching Oof. four people with the Dragon Current. But do they have the follow through? Kokoda coming in with the foul play, connecting onto two. Is this where they time to shine? The Dragonite is down. Four Pokemon caught. Zora Tigers 
Is this the time we see them come back? Yeah, John, with a great initiation on Gyarados. I mean, that's one of the biggest dragon currents we have seen all tournament long. Not only that, avoiding getting KO'd themselves. Just a few auto attacks in here and there to get that life steal that Gyarados has with those boosts. It's absolutely fantastic. Keeping them around in these team fights. And when you're playing at a knife's edge against Zeta Division, you got to make clutch plays in those moments. Great call up by Zora Tigers Gaming. And more importantly, the the levels are now in favor of Zoro Tigers. They're sitting on three cores that are above level 12. They passed the levels of Zeta Division. So now all of a sudden, you're going to be feeling much stronger, much more confident. And also these resources help you get ready for that Ray Quasar because you're going to get your plus skills. Exactly. Yeah, you're starting to get into those big plus moves that can really be game changing for a few Pokemon in particular. The Registeel going in the favor of Zora Tigers Gaming as well. So yet another attack buff to work with. Feeling quite confident about these final moments, or at least the Reggie will help in that regard. But Zeta Division have taken the early defensive positioning. Umbreon and Mammoth Swine, they've been doing this all game long. Why stop now? Gotta keep it up, you know? If you've been confident doing this in the early game, why not keep going? Their execution as a team is relatively unmatched. So if there's a team that can make a comeback happen at a level deficit, it is Zeta Division. But who makes the move first? Yeah, Chong is only at level 12, right? Despite a big push earlier, they still were able to catch up as much as Just maybe they would have liked. They finally get to that level 13, and Urshifu will start tapping that Rayquaza. Always a danger when playing into a Dragonite couple. Uh, Okada with a big push. Tomato right behind. That's a few Defender Unite moves with the Dragon Current with the response. That is Rom down to start this fight. They've also used a Psychic Soleil, so even if he comes back, he won't have that damage boost. And look at this Mule in the back lane. Jong as well. They try to use the Umbreon Unite, but everyone is down anyway. Kokoda coming too late with the disengage. Rayquaza at the mercy of Zora Tigers Gaming. Wow. Zoinks. We're possibly looking at a Game 3 situation. They somehow did it. I think oh. assuredly that is what we are looking at. Zora Tigers Gaming with an unbelievable comeback. I mean, built up in that moment around the bottom side of the map earlier on, finds that confidence, finds the momentum. They take a fantastic team fight. I mean, Zeta Division using a lot of their tank and support unite moves to try to get out of an initial engagement. Zora Tigers Gaming able to wait, bait out those moves, and then collapse with a way stronger and a better advantage state team fight. Amazing work from Zora Tigers game. They were not shaken. They were not moved. They said, guys, it is okay. It's not over till the game is over. All it took was them just to find that one opening, and they did it. Meaning, game number three, Zeta Division, Zora Tigers Gaming, it could truly go anyone's way. And I think in this final game, we're going to be seeing some cheese. We're going to be seeing an ace. Someone's going home. Yeah, so Zeta Division versus Zora Tigers Gaming. This Korea versus Japan matchup so is a elimination game as well. And it's going to come down to one final game between these two teams to be the decider. I mean, I got to admit, I do not envy any of those players up on stage. <laughs> but on the line right now, the Hoopa Band and Sarah Ledge Band. We're running it back. That's a Charizard Band. No surprises so far. Outside An Urshifu. of that one, it, it had to go. The Urshifu band. It had to go, Zoink. So I feel like both teams can play it, and it's like, if you don't get it first, there's a good chance you're going to go up against it. But because of that, Leafeon goes through. And we've seen what Leafeon has done in the tournament thus far. But because of that, Rom gets his Inteleon, and Wajira gets that Blissey. So the Dream Team pairing is now here for Zeta Division. Okay, so Zeta Division has the Inteleon in their hands, denying Subin to have it. And it will be the Blissey taken. I wonder if this means Zora Tigers Gaming would ever consider the comb face support in this lineup. It's uh, It could work great with that Leafeon, especially if Mule's main job is going to be shutting down Rom throughout this series, but Zeta Division is going to lock in the Blaziken. Vidopo going to take that Pokemon in particular. They're hovering Metagross, Metagross right now, but it will be the oh. swap to Tomato's Trevenant. 
Okay, I like the Trevenant. This is Tomato's signature defender. If there's a Pokemon I think of when I think of Tomato, it's him hanging off the branch of that Trevenant. Whoa, okay. What? We are gonna have Pikachu, attacker Pikachu this time around, not supporter Pikachu, locked in, and it will be the Metagross from Kakata. So obviously that Blastoise in game one wasn't quite getting the job done for Zeta Division. They want to change it up. They're going with the Metagross. Blaziken, a very very, very strong, pushing kind of front-to-back melee build that they put together. Sue being going to have their work cut out for them for that Pikachu damage early. So a couple of things we need to consider looking at the drafts. Very early game oriented for Zoro Tiger. That's only really John that they're waiting for with these evolutions. Zeta, though, they've got three try evolutionary Pokemon mm. that they're going to have to get those levels on. Now, obviously, Vitopo will get his in that central area, but for Roman Kokoda, if you're Zoro Tigers, who are you actually looking to slow down here? Because we know Roman, that Inteleon, he will rotate as a Drizzile as soon as he gets the snipe shot. But I feel like Kokoda, he also can't leave a Metagross untouched in that top lane. Yeah, that's true. I mean, oof, I, it is, you're right though, to call that out. It's a scaling composition for Zeta Division. I mean, almost the truest definition we've seen of one of those. So it's going to be late game focused. If you can try to shut that down early, maybe you can take it out. Torchic target down. Maybe that Sobble. Build them tougher to take down. But here we go. Game three between Zora Tigers Gaming and Zeta Division. Elimination match. Win or go home. We are possibly going to be looking at two Japanese teams in top four. Or Korea could be standing by these teams size. I cannot believe we are getting so deep into this competition. Zeta Division, they have all of Japan supporting them, but the Zora Tigers, they have a lot to prove. And if they can actually win this matchup, I think this team is going to earn a lot more respect from the region than they currently are getting. Yeah, Chong making that happen early with a nice stat score of four, getting those attack weight stacks in. They do have to be pretty uh, safe as they retreat back to their side. Chobo did go into the central area to assist Mule with knocking out the wild Pokemon as well as taking the red buff for themselves. And what is this? Tomato on a sneaky play to not only take some wild Pokemon. Get it. He's not find that one, but is going to try to make the retreat happen. He might go down here, unfortunately, although he might have X speed on him. Tomato, no, he's got the eject, but no too much damage. The Umbreon Pikachu combination, a little bit too strong, but with Leafy on here, maybe Rom could be in trouble, caught back by that foul play, but again, the eject buttons. Gonna yeah. be able to keep Rom alive. Yeah, that's a lot of early utility used, though, so the next push, they're gonna have to play even safer than the one they are now. The eject button, one of the longest cooldowns of any of your battle items you could equip. Rom does get to the Citrus Bear, a jack button's away. They were pulled by a pretty nasty blaze kick from Pinopo, who's currently busy scoring already at level six. And you will try to bring the hurt though on the leaf beyond, but Pinopo is getting to work. That's a Combuskin knocking out a Gyarados, and a Wajiro and Kokata are going to be chasing down Ward. What an early start from Zeta. Oh, big overextension there for Zora Tigers. They thought they were going to be able to get the retreatment punishes, but just too much damage, too much tank there from Zeta Division. And now this is where things are going to start to get a little bit iffy because Zeta, they're not as weak as they used to be. Jung is here as that Gyarados, but as much as I want to say the Gyarados is going to be able to carry here, we're talking about Vitopper and Kokoda. These guys can make a lot happen, especially when they're lacking resources. Yeah, it's going to be tough. It's one of the biggest level deficits that Jung I think has had to work with in this top half so far. Just kind of playing catch up, matching the level right now, but definitely almost a level behind as Kokoda almost at that level seven. Jong waiting now at 720. We'll have another spawn of the Swablu Altaria. So yet another little objective to battle for. A few mini ones, if you will. And now Jong waiting for a specific target to find. I believe they do have eyes on Vidopo, but it might not be up to them. It might be up to the Leafeon to get that first strike. Overheat securing most of that then. Oh my gosh, they have to bounce backwards. But hang on a minute, the Leafeon with the Emerald two step. They're gonna keep going. They don't have an aggressive one, but Tomato has been caught back. And look at this, this Metang just going into the back, snapping up a berry, but that battle coming at the cost of two for one. Not the trade you're looking for, but hang on a minute though. Rom is there with the slap shots, but it just didn't connect, unfortunately.
unfortunately. Yeah, Zeta Division making a lot of these plays kind of not haphazardly necessarily, but they just really need these stacks. So they're making really bold play calls. If you're going to try to get around this tougher early game while you're waiting to scale, those held items that stack up with your scores will do you a world of favors. Zeta Division does get the Reggie Alecki, though, and that's going to give them yet another asset to work on a Siege 1. They don't have that attacker here. Sabine is still camping out in that bottom lane as that Pikachu, so missing out on one source of damage, but they should be able to take out this Alecky for themselves. Meanwhile, though, as Alephion gets the Matangs, that's going to be a nice knockout, but also gets knocked out in the process. So it does delay the push, gave the team enough time to get rid of that Alecky, and Data Division back to just getting those wild Pokemon. Yeah, a bit of a trade, but in the end, you did knock out that Reggie Alecky from going into your goal zone if you're Zora Tigers. Gaming. On the other hand, Zeta Division able to take out a Leafeon. So, an even trade between these two teams. Zeta Division, though, going to have the first run at Red Ice as they've already shown up. Tabito going to lock down Mule, but they can't oh. lock down more than one target. Big oh early. my god. That will be the KO onto Leafeon. So, the speedster of Zord Tigers Gaming gone already. Thunderstorm from Pikachu hitting a few targets, but Tomato is not going to go down from just that. A check button out of the Thunder. Horn Leech is back. That's an overheat charge a little too early. Gyarados. Oh. Oh. Up and Jong will be taking the Reg Ice. Jong on this Gyarados doing some major work for Zoro Tigers. Going to continue advancing for the team. Bliss assist to try and get that Blissey out and do damage. But oh, Rom, he's been jumped on by the Gyarados. They want him so bad. Oh. They get him. Oh, okay. to that tier two. A little deep. Zora <laughs> Tigers gaming with quite a push there. Yeah, you're right. Going to that tier two might be a little bit of a too, uh, too far of a push. But Ward going to be camping out, potentially going to threaten 40 points in the back goal zone here in the tier two. But the Inteleon is there. I believe that will be a stop. 40 points not going in. Game looking pretty stable. Levels are looking a little lopsided, unfortunately. It's very even across Zeta Division, but Zoro Tigers got to get their supports and defenders to catch up a little bit because they are slightly behind. Thunderstorm, they're going to be committed because we have that Metagross in the front line, losing a lot of health. Kokoda trying to build up all of that shielding, but it's just not enough. Sabine's Pikachu amping out damage. Oh my gosh. It's so strong, and it's not even equipping that cursed incense that we see on Pikachu quite a bit. So no anti heal. Instead, just opting for that energy amplifier and the spoon. Ignore some of the defenses and, of course, deal out more Unite moves if you can. Also, the points looking amazing for Zora Tigers Gaming right now. We have the Leafeon and the Umbreon oh. on the top half. Oh, the boy. Almost there. Gyarados looking for one. John will take out Wajiro. And Zora Tigers Gaming have taken complete control of the momentum in this game number three. Massive lead. Lots of experience. Lots of points. It's looking fantastic here for Zora Tigers. But how does Zeta Division make the comeback happen? They're not too far behind. They're not in that code red. They just have to try and figure out how do we pick apart Zoro Tigers? How do we get into the back lines to deal with Sabine? Because if you let him pop that thunderstorm in the back lines, he just does so much damage that even Tomato is at risk of just being insta KO'd. These are all fair questions, but you only got three minutes and 30 seconds to answer them, Dan Lee. Right now, it is Zora Tigers gaming kind of finding the key to success oh. against Zeta Division up into this point. So much so, Zeta Division might have to abandon ship around this basement. Reggie, an objective they've been playing around so much, but they're going in for a second oh my shot gosh, at stun. it now. The stun coming out from the Pikachu prevented Zeta from having any of their initiators to jump right in, and even the Metagross wants nothing to do, and they're just constantly stunned left, right, and center. This Pikachu is a menace. Pikachu dealing out the damage in the front line. It's also allowing Jong to be a bit more mobile. Tomato's job on this Trevenant is normally to clear out space for the rest of their damage dealers to work, but right now they just have too many threats to try to take care of, and Jong has finally found the way to weave around this Trevenant. The bounce is constantly hitting the back line, avoiding those tree suns, and Jong's Gyarados is on a whole nother level here in our game number three. Zeta Division, I think they have to put all their cards in Tomato now. Tomato's initiation is really Really gonna have to set things up, try to set up for those snipes. Rom needs to chip this team down before a fight even begins because that was one of the winning factors for this team in these earlier games. Every time you kept landing those snipe shots, chip them away, chip them away until the point where you have multiple Pokemon at half health. That's the ideal time to force a fight. So we have to see if we can have that happen because at the moment, Zoro Tigers, as soon as a fight is about to happen, they just go. They don't let the picks happen. 
The Zeta Division doesn't have the defensive ability of that Espeon Psychic Solaire anymore, instead opting for the offensive option with this Snipe Shot from Inteleon instead. So they're going to have to play this one a bit more aggressively. Kokata checking every tall grass Mule. they can. Eventually they find Mule, but they have taken complete top positioning now as they force Leafeon back towards the goal. This is so difficult. The fact that Mule is there, he's already spotted Kokoda, so they can't even go for any stealth missions. They can't go for the backstabs. The vision game for Zoro Tigers, it's so on point. It's great, and Kokoda can find a few multiple targets. Let's not forget about Metagross's compute and crash unite move. They able to lock down a few targets, get a ton of shielding, and it works so well alongside the Blissey. So. Look at the wraparound. We've got the Leafy on looking for the surprise. Yeah, we do have the Leafeon on the flank. They now have idea where the Inteleon is. Rom does land one big snipe shot, but they gotta be constantly aware where that Leafeon oh, is. Oh, he spotted Rom. Leafeon's thinking about it. They spotted him. Mule has been spotted. They know he's there. Blaziken having to play defense and protect Rom. Such a desperate situation. We do have a low Umbreon on the side of Zoro Tigers, and things are looking pretty desperate, but Zeta, they're right next to the Rayquaza. I think they have to start ripping this. Hey. Time is running. Out. Exactly. They have to make the play call on the Rayquaza. At this point, they are just down by 200 points, but there's only 40 seconds remaining. Zhong is going to jump in. Dragon Kurt, they found multiple targets now. Leaf going to get the end engage as well, but the Bliss assistance is going to save Rom. Two step! The the Leaf Yon takes out the Blissey first. Watch your route down. Inteleon down. That is Sora Tigers Gaming securing the Rayquaza. Sora Tigers, they are doing it. They are about to eliminate Sega Division from the Black 29. Championships. Who would have thought this was a matchup that people thought it was going to go in favor of Zeta Division? Zora Tigers Gaming. And I feel like for the first time within our top eight, we truly have an upset. Zeta Division, first place at the Asian Champions League, 